o'clock. So, um, just welcoming everybody here tonight. Good. Okay. Welcome everybody. Here tonight. All right. Um, so what we kind of want to do is to get everybody from Chestnut. I'm assuming everybody here is from Chestnut area in town. Um, kind of go over some ideas that we came up with um, to look at the street. Um, so what we're going to do is probably spend about the first 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we'll have our engineers <coughs> talk. Uh, Brian's going to kind of lead this thing a little bit. He's we'll our infrastructure portfolio fellow. Um, and then we'll have time for Q&A. So we'll start out. Uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and let you take it over from there. Okay. So just for everyone's benefit, we're just the agenda that we have for today, basically pretty simple, right? Um, uh, discussion on the Chestnut, Dive, uh, Chestnut Drive reconstruction uh, proposal that we have uh, uh, presented for uh, the council's consideration as well as residents input so this meeting uh, the purpose of this meeting is to get information uh, from the residents to say you know here's what the project is give everyone uh, the details of what the project is and then from there uh, uh, we still have an open period for protest in which uh, all the residents can file written protests to the auditor and with those read, written read, uh, either protests or in support, uh, we'll make the decision whether the project will proceed or not. So that's really the point of this meeting is to get input from everyone and make sure everyone has the information, the same information that we have, uh, so that we can make an informed decision on how to proceed. So that's the purpose of this meeting. And I'm wonderful, glad to see that everyone showed up. Just a point of reference. I'm an Ironwood resident as well, so I'm all the neighbors, neighbor to all of you as well. So I have a vested interest as, as much as you folks do. So, uh, we'll get to see the slides, all right. Just, and also just a point of reference, we're also recording the meeting. Uh, so if anyone wants to talk, I'd prefer to try and keep it civil so that we can keep one person at a time talking. If you can, please come to the, the podium over here. Uh, so you can just state your name and your address and, and just uh, you know provide your input. Uh, before we get started. So, all right, with that, we'll get going. And uh, and again, we've named this one, the proposal uh, project is 2017-6, Street Improvement Project. And where this came from is, is we went through uh, an assessment uh, early in January, early in January to make a, okay, let's take a look at the streets in Horace. And there hasn't been a reconstruction project in the city of Horace since most of the streets were paved in the first place, which was kind of a surprise to me. So uh, we're at that point now where some of the streets are requiring some more maintenance other than just chip seal and that kind of thing. So that's where the list was drawn up uh, in conjunction with the city engineers. Uh, and Chestnut Drive reconstruction was one of those projects that bubbled to the top of the list. There's a lot of other streets that require uh, rework as well. But uh, Chestnut Drive is obviously one of those that some work needs to be done. So that's why we said, all right, let's make this a priority to get estimates and approaches and how we would do it, all right? So uh, here's the agenda that we plan to go through. All right, so as most of you are probably aware, there's 46 homes in that, uh, in that development. Uh, and this is one of the few areas uh, in Horace that actually has curb and gutter. Uh, and the, the, the asphalt is really bituminous uh, surface, so that's, that's where that term comes from. Uh, the street width is 28 feet, uh, and obviously there's been drainage issues, uh, as all of you are aware, well aware of, uh, for a very long time. So, uh, and there's been settling that's been happening along the way uh, underneath the, underneath the uh, asphalt, and as well as most of your residents have experience. I mean, I know if I got the same thing <coughs> with my house where foundation and everything has been settling in that neighborhood. It's, it's quite frustrating, right? As we all are, are, uh, have dealt with this. So with this settling and the pavement breaking up and, and deteriorating, we recognize that there's some work that needs to be done. Plus the, the groundwater is quite high in this area. Uh, so that is, that is another factor that plays into this. So, all right. Any questions on that? Okay. So we've, we've got a couple options that we want to discuss. Uh, one, option one is a, a complete reconstruction, which basically means remove and replace the existing street, or remove and replace the curb and gutter, uh, and then uh, take the driveways and rebuild the, the aprons, so those driveways that connect to the street. Uh, 
salvage the base course of, of you know as much as possible and rebuild that uh, so that we can get that stabilized soil underneath the street so that we don't have to do this again uh, and then upgrade the storm sewer system so uh, as most of you are aware when we do get a high water event uh, high rain event I should say uh, water builds up and that's on that west side of Chestnut and it's pretty much a lake back in there so it needs to be uh, dealt with and so there's there's an upgrade of that storm sewer uh, to deal with that and the first uh, upgrade that we uh, that was in, put in place uh, was to take the, the water uh, and pump it force it into um, the Cheyenne which wasn't in place it was just gravity feet into the Cheyenne before so with that first upgrade was just force it into the river even during high water on the Cheyenne so that was dealing with that issue turns out that it, it wasn't able to handle the volume of water in that area so that's where uh, this upgrade is is also is needed because it drains more water than we expect so that's where uh, that upgrade is coming from and then obviously install drain tile behind the curbing gutter so I, one thing that uh, we've talked about that needs to be done is to uh, for residents to have their uh, sump pump going out onto the street ideally this would be a, an opportunity to when they put that drain tile in place that you can take that sump pump and put it right into the drain tile and that instead of the street and that will help reduce uh, the water load on the street itself and hopefully lengthen the life of that street Brian. okay yep with that drain tile if the street is crowned won't the water stay on, uh, in the gutter area in the concrete area why would we need that, that drain tile behind it if the water is crumbed properly and the, and the water will stay in the, in the gutter area? I'm going to look at Jesse and Jim and Dean yeah. to help. That, that drain tile is put in to take care of some of the subsurface, the subsoil moisture, because that's what's happening out there. Is you, you have a high water table, everybody has sump pumps out there. Your sump pumps run all the time, I would assume. So you got you got high water out there, so that drain tile, we put the drain tile in to take care of some of that subsurface moisture, the, the water that does get down in the cracks in the pavement, the crack in between the pavement and the curb and gutter, the cracks in the curb and gutter, things like that. That'll take care of that subsurface moisture to get it out of there and get it to the storm sewer. So, yes, you're right. If the road is crowned correctly, the water should flow into the curb and gutter and flow into the catch basins correctly. That's, that's, that's a big problem right that's now. That's the purpose of yes. the street deterioration. Yep, yep right? exactly right. Yep. Like all the new subdivisions we're building in town right now, we put that drain tile in behind the curb and gutter to take care of some of that subsurface moisture. There will get there will be moisture that gets into that aggregate base underneath the pavement, so you got to be able to get that out of there somehow. So the drain tile along the side helps get that out of there. So also, you can put your sump pumps in there, so you sump pumps will, instead of those sump pumps going out over the street or into your sanitary sewer, they can go into that drain tile and go into the storm sewer. David, that, that's a good point. That, so that's a standard design for all the developments going forward is to put drain tile behind the that's, gutter? That's correct. That's okay. your city standard. Didn't realize that. Yes. Okay. When was the road initially installed? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. There's, there's some slides here with some of the history. So we'll get there. So, all right. So option two uh, is to basically what we're calling rehabilitate the road. So rather than reconstruct and take out the, the curb and gutter and and uh, rebuild that uh, the pavement and base and everything this is actually just mill the top two inches uh, of the street uh, mud jack the curbs to get them back up to level uh, and then install the the drain drain towel behind the gutter uh, but then also uh, and then relay down the the new layer of to crown the road as it should be right but there's still the storm sewer upgrade so we're making sure that that south or i'm sorry west side of chestnut is properly drained uh, as it should be so that that element the upgrading of the storm sewer system is in both options so we make sure we get rid of that water okay and then there's option three which of course is if we do nothing we will just kick the can down the road so that's that's really option three and kathy you know um like when we work in the storm sewer there's water so is that just because it's that high? I mean, if this really would take care of that, or would that take care of the water? And you would look in the gutter, and it's there. I mean, because that's in the gutter or the storm sewer. In the in the, in the storm sewer drain. Yeah. 
That would be probably one of the things we look at doing is videotaping the existing storm sewer to see if there's sags and heaves and low spots in there and fix those as part of the so project. But, but relay. Oh, there so might be would, some spots that, would that be might included. have to be relayed. That would be included yeah. in the re in rehabilitation option? Correct. Okay. Can you go back to that slide to dryer? Please? What's that last bullet point mean? The, the capital improvement. So this was one of the projects. So what we're doing is on an annual basis, uh, we're identifying the capital improvement projects across the city, whether they be streets, they be water, their uh, storm sewer, sanitary sewer, all the capital improvements that were. Um, Whose capital? Ours or the city? It, it's the term. That's what it's called. It, it's a capital improvement. So it's it's basically a capital investment capital in the city. It. Right. It isn't it isn't the financial term. It's more yeah. just saying here here's a project. It's, it's a commonly used terms across other cities to have it. Sort of threw me in front of that. I thought that yep. No. 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 It's not our capital per se, right? It's not like we're a hedge fund or something like that. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So the stone sewer again. This one is in both options uh, for increasing the pipe size to increase capacity. Uh, and Jim, do you want to talk about this one a little bit more to explain this one or? Jesse? Um, yeah, we looked at the storm sewer um, right now at the existing, at the pump station there. It tees in with the two 24s come into one and it dumps into the lift station. So that's kind of why you're seeing the back of the water on the west side there, backing up, because the water's not able to get to that storm sewer fast enough in the handle of the past water that's coming. So we looked at removing that where it tees together and dumping that straight into a new structure right there, a few pumps that can handle the full water that's coming. Um, it's based on five years of sort of that city standard. So, and then a new outlet structure to the river with new size pumps. So what does that mean to install the pipes deeper? I don't understand what that means. Well, we looked at two different options, getting rid of that tee, and then we looked at another option all the way back, all the way around Chestnut. What size pipes, if the pipes are sized right? They're all size right, but there's a few at the end that need to get a little bigger. So, and then we looked at options to install it a little deeper too, to get the inlets a little deeper. Because right now the, the inlets are shallow there, and you can see at the inlets, they're kind of heaved every once in a while. And that's where you're talking to the sags and the pipe and stuff, and you see water sitting in the storm sewer. So that was just an option just to lower it down a little bit. Okay. A little cross -line. So it's actually replacing the manholes and inlets for the storm sewer in all the not areas? All, no, not all the areas. Okay, so just some of the areas. Some, yeah, correct. And is that because they're deteriorating or what, what's, what's the issue there? Well, if you have size, the pipe sizes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then it, it actually adds a new uh, pump station, storm sewer yeah, pump the, station the, as well, yeah, to be able to handle the additional. So yeah. what type of... You said a five-year rain event. What does yeah, that event, kind yeah. of? What does yeah, that? Mean? What does that mean? Uh, five-year, twenty-four-hour event. Okay. Uh, that's your intensity of the rain, or your precipitation event coming in. Okay. Tammy, you had a question. Yeah, I was just wondering: Is Chestnut Drive the only one that uses that lift station? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because Ironwood dry, drains a different direction. Well, Ironwood, where does Ironwood come in? Because it comes over to it. Yeah, it does, because it comes in the back and then it comes through, uh, through the ditches. Yeah, through the ditches. Yeah. And then through part of the DJ is placed back there. Part of the ocean. Yeah. 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 So they don't have a problem. So there isn't just chestnut no, no, chest no, chest 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 There's additional from the south. There's some additional from the south. So then should those share the assessment cost? Yes. Yeah, if yes. there's storm yes. sewer upgrades, you know. For the storm, storm sewer upgrades, yes. Correct. <coughs> okay. Um, how is it so miscalculated in the first place that the size of the piping is not adequate right now? Because it was known what the size of the belt was going to be. So who made the errors? Do we want to have that conversation right now? Or do we want to leave? I, I don't know. We just, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about the history here, because we've got the next <coughs> slide here, right? A little bit about the history, okay? So if, just to be clear here on this last one though, if for the storm sewer, all three developments should be assessed, right? Apple Orchard, 
ironwood and chestnut since they all bring Apple in orchard doesn't. Yeah, it does the back of the, the back of the orchard comes through DJ's lot. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay. No, they're not part of the forest. Part of the orchard is part of the forest. I, I think we just want to state this isn't a project yet. This, nothing has been decided. There's no assessment district. There's nothing that has been determined. We're trying to get your feedback yet. And as Mike states, if it does so, interact with other groups, we have to take everyone into consideration. Totally, so yes, totally, that would be something we have to do. Totally get that. We watched the minutes from your last meeting. And in that conversation, I, I do want to applaud you guys for trying to work through this. But it seems like you're out over your skis a little bit on this. I mean, to not know that piece of information you get to ask like once and if we don't get enough people to write a letter this is done deal right am i wrong by saying that? Having this conversation. Right. right but i'm saying if we don't write the letter it's our the, the actions have gone through we have 30 <laughs> days if we wouldn't all come to this meeting it would have happened we would have got a bill no we no, weren't guaranteed that's, we were going to do it. You were saying that. Yeah, in your meeting last night, I watched well, the standard, the standard policy is you have a 30-day term. We still don't have to go forward with it Okay. As so, a city. But if we wanted to send anything, you guys would have been like, cool, let's do this. No, I don't no, think so. Because so it's too I don't want to give anybody a phone call. Why don't we have this meeting before we put it out to everybody? That is what we're going to do. It seems like the input in here is already exceeded. All right, let's keep going with this meeting, guys, and then we present the information here. And then we'll have this conversation, okay? Let's go, Brian, keep going. So we'll uh, talk about a little bit about the special assessment process. Uh, so the resolution declaring the improvement. So that's what happened basically uh, in June was the declaration of the, uh, you know, publishing of the resolution. Uh, and then the, the notice was actually uh, published as well around the protest uh, of, against that resolution, uh, which started a 30 day. So again, that's, that's how that process works. And then uh, the protest to bar the proceeding. If the majority of the homeowners uh, say no, we don't want this, then that then that pro protest takes effect, and it, it basically kills the project, right? So, uh, so that that's essentially the process. Now let's. So here here are the costs of the proposed uh, cost for the two pro two options uh, for the full reconstruction. It was two point just under two point five uh, for reconstructing everything. The rehabilitating the street, uh, option two, uh, was uh, 921, just over 921. Uh, and then the, the postpone, obviously, is, is you know no cost at this point. So we would consider other options in the future. All right? It's $1,997. So... Did that? Did that? I wrote down a wrong number. Okay. All right. No, that's my record. Okay. It's one million nine nine seven. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. So you're right. You're right. This is wrong. This is wrong. The slides are wrong. That's right. Yep. What you guys? Bill. In that one million nine hundred ninety-seven, one point nine million number, the us curious if there's an engineering and legal administrative bonding fee. That's 20% for that one and only 10% for the other bids. What's the, why the differentiation of that? Oh, the same percentage. Because that's an extra 150,000 bucks. Mine says 20%. Damon, you want to? Mine says 20%. My sheet. So I don't know what yeah, sheet you got. So. There? It says 20 there, but if, yep. but if you look down at the second option, it's 10% for the exact same line item. Yeah. Um, where are you seeing this at? So uh, on the on the improvement district document itself. So further down in option two. Option two. Yeah. Option two has that line item: engineering, legal, administrative, and bonding, and ten percent of the project cost. And option one has that twenty percent. Um, the option one would be the total reconstruct, which would be more engineering, design, more inspection. That's storm sewer pipes, everything. It would be a bigger project, longer project, more difficult project. The second option, the 921, is basically a mill and overlay project. So less engineering fees, less administrative fees, things like that. So if those are based as a percentage yeah. of total, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But it's a standard that we use. I mean, it's a standard. It's a, it's a larger project, more difficult project, because you're doing more design, more inspection, more staking. If it's a total reconstruction project, you're going to have more expenses Understood. for construction. Understood. a lot more money because it's the yeah. same 
So if you stake out something for an hour versus two hours. So let's break the first one into two caps and then 10%. It's not the same. You said the first one was, was 10%? The first one's the larger 20%. one was 20%. 20%. The cost of that line item, the second one was 10%. In the back? Yes. Um, in both in both scenarios, is the stone sewer upgrade the same? Like, is yes. it going to be the same upgrade? Yes. Okay, then why is it $50,000 higher on the reconstruction versus the rehabilitation? You got $200,000 stone sewer upgrade on the rehabilitation, but two fifty dollars on the total reconstruction on the bid. No, man. Jesse, you can go first with us that one. Do you want to explain that? Yes, the total reconstruct, we looked at all the pipes going around. And then on the second option, it was basically the west end is where the pipes got bigger. So it was, I guess it was just a, just a figure I threw in there because these were done at two, two separate times and then they wanted two different scenarios and that's how it got broke out. So but as I noticed too the the bio uh, bio material is five hundred and fifty bucks a ton on the one and four fifty on the other. For or excuse me not again yeah, the second time did it, the price was different the second time we did it. <laughs> yep. Most likely. One estimate was done back last year, one was done this year. So prices were more expensive last year. At that time so the, the, the reconstruction yeah. could probably be less yeah. than because Correct. of the current cost. Correct. Yeah. And as we've seen in other projects, the actuals can come in below what the cost estimate is as well. Correct. So, right. so, so for example, the project that we're just that's going on right now, the bids we just did the bids last week, and they came in significantly under what we had estimated. So, I mean, so just, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? So these are these are an estimate, right? It isn't, you know, until until we actually get the construction bid, you know, we don't know how much it's actually going to cost. So it could be less, but or it could be more. Yeah, well, either way. Usually, yep. So far, we've been seeing less. Yep. So that's that's good. Where was the? Jim, where was it? Did I go past the slide that we had with the, to some of the history? Where did that goofy thing go? Got mm -hmm. it. We had it here. Yeah, I'm not seeing it in this. This one she brought up. And. <coughs> Okay, any questions? I'll, I'm gonna go look for that slide because I know I have it here. Here's a summary too that I sent you. So, any question? I have. Um, my name is Tammy Hoger. I'm at 212 Chestnut Drive. And I just want to say thank you very much to our council and to the, um, our city employees and also for our development coming out. Um, Horace is an absolutely wonderful community and neighbors look out for each other and the city looks out for each other and I think, I'm hoping that we can work together going forward that our community has heard and what they want and what they don't want and also that we want the ducks in a row before we start we don't want a repeat of what happened when we were originally built in my opinion we're moving forward too quickly without having all of those numbers correct without having all of the data correct, um, not knowing who is all tied in. I have a petition that was signed by 32 of the 46 homes saying we just want to slow, not, some people want to go forward. 
Some people don't want it at all. Some people want more information. And so we do have 32 written um, disagreements with the special assessments as they are now that we want to be a part of this plan and we don't want to cause or I'm sorry I don't want to cause uproar I just want Horace to stay the great community that it is and so Vance am I supposed to give this to you yes all right all right, so here, here is a little bit of the history uh, behind, you know, the, the development. It wasn't a separate, I, I didn't take the slides and put it in. So uh, the Ironwood, which was Iron, or Arneson first edition, that construction happened in, in 97. It was completed in September uh, of 98. And the storm sewer uh, for that area was completed about the same time. And then uh, the storm sewer uh, and sanitary sewer installation for River Oaks and Chestnut. Uh, so Houston was the, the engineering company and Master was a, the contractor. Uh, and in the project was actually uh, approved in 2000. And it's typical for these types of projects to have a one year warranty uh, on these kinds of projects. So that's when uh, effectively the, the warranty period uh, terminated on 2001. So that's not unusual. So then the uh, Street Improvement District uh, was in 99-2. So they, oh, they were done the same year. Done the same year. So this is essentially the street, and this is all the infrastructure underneath it. Mm -hmm. yes. So those are basically all installed and, and completed in uh, November 2000. November 2000, and then effectively that warranty would have expired in 2001 which is not unusual. That's fairly common for street construction projects like this. So that's that's a bit of the history. Do you have the date on when, uh, after the houses were constructed, when uh, when they came back in to Crown Road? And, and I don't think they ever did. Yeah. But I suppose we'd have to go back and look and see if there was anything in the project file on that. I, I didn't see anything. When there I was nothing there, I nothing you saw? Just briefly to get the numbers and the dates. That there was some planned overlay after construction? So, okay. I think it got late in the year, and I think it kind of revolved that trial. <coughs> Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, my name is Peter Bruno. I live at 209 Chestnut. Um, first, I would like to say thanks. This isn't easy for anyone. Um, <clears throat> those of you that know both Aaron and I, we, we don't, we weren't born and raised here. We come from Wisconsin. Living in Minnesota, so this whole assessment thing is just like ludicrous to me. It's like, <laughs> I, I mean, we brag about our great taxes here, but this would just blow that out of the water. <laughs> We'd be like, Minneapolis? Oh, that's nothing. We live in Horace. Um, but in any case, I guess a, a few of the things I just wanted to clarify so that we all don't end up getting railroaded. We do all need to write you a letter, correct? Yep, that's the way this is going to stop. Which it could be very simple if I protest this, my address, name. Okay, that was my next question. Just say it to Van. But you send it to Van. It, it's got signature and house number and... Well, I just, that's why I wanted to clarify, Tammy, because, you know, that was my... I didn't think that it did, and I didn't want that to be like... So let, let's thing. clarify. Yes. I will verify, but I'm pretty sure that this would be good enough as far as a written protest goes, because all you have to do is write and say that you're protesting the project. Okay, and so if there, if there isn't, we can count on you to communicate that with us before the deadline? Of yes, the yes, we should be able to do that because all your, all your addresses are on here. Okay, perfect. Um, 
Just, just a minute, though. So, um, I do have a map of, Chest, oh, sorry, of Chestnut Drive that um, is checked off the home sign. And the, I guess the really only question, I think you answered mostly through the, through the thing is, is this based on linear feet of our property or is it based on having one house on that property, the assessment? It's based on the number of homes, right? Number, yeah, not, number, just not, the preliminary number that we put out there was is if it was divided out equally, here's what it would approximately be. Right. But you don't know until the assessment it's commission the gets together, gets together right. and, and, and decides who, who's how that, like who, who gets together, who's the there's special a, there's assessment. There's a committee that gets together and then they decide how to do the assessment layout. And okay. then we, along with the engineers and the attorney, they start that process and then they present is, it to us. Is that a public deal that we can all get involved with? Yeah, you're, you're involved with that because you'll get, if you're in the, the list, if you're on the list, you'll get a letter saying, here's how much that your property um, receives a benefit, and then you can protest that. Okay, so there's a... Yeah, you can protest it to the Special Assessment Commission okay. and to the city, uh, city Council. Okay, and just, again, I'm speaking for myself. I don't, I don't want to take any, put any words in anybody's mouth. I think I handled this was, was a little weak. Um, I, I heard a discussion last night. Sharon, I'm glad you said let's send a letter and just let's get it done. That should have happened before it went to the Fargo Forum. We could have probably had this meeting beforehand and said, hey, let's look at some options. I know there's some really smart engineers in this room that could have helped out and like let's think about this through because I think, I, I know I feel that it was sort of railroaded and after this keep, meeting, I'm not feeling any better about that. Keep, keep in mind, this has been a discussion fairly frequent, at least monthly and since, since February. And so and John says, it perfectly. This has been going on too long. Yeah. We need to get this going this year. I don't think that's going to happen. I appreciate what John said about let's get this going. It's been going on long enough. But if we were going to get action instead of all of us just complaining about the water and the bump, <coughs> um, it, it's, it's, and the Equitan said, it is going to debt divide this community because I was just in the other area with um, storm sewers and their road is just as lousy as our road. And if, if they're going to get assessed, you know, another 40 grand a house down there, it, it's just not going to be good for the community. So, anyways, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other input? Mike? I'll just talk loud. So, I'm Mike Smith. I just, can you just go over the process on, on how would you select which option to do? Um, so, I, did, I signed the protest letter. More, just let's get more information. Let's figure this <coughs> out, right? Because I'm against number one. I might be for number two, especially if we're going to have ironwood and possibly upper orchard included. That might even bring down the cost of option two due to the storm right. sewer. So, if this goes through in 30 days, how do you decide option one, mm -hmm. option two? You know that. What are those? What is that process? And do I take my name off the list? Do I have to resign something? Well, I think that's part of what this informational meeting is about. It's kind of what do you guys see that you would be comfortable with doing? Because I threw three options out there. We can put on a four or five. I don't really care, but I mean, this has been an ongoing discussion for an awful long time. What we tried to do is throw some options out there, at least give you an idea that we're looking at it. We'd like to try and do something about this. It's going to cost some money. What we're trying to do is figure out what is the best way to handle this so that we don't run into the situations that we currently are on Chestnut. Reef spring, it's the same thing. You guys got water, you know, in the, you know, two feet of water, it seems like in some areas. We're trying to figure out how do we get that so we're not having to send people out there to fix that and get you guys streets that you can live with. That's what, what we're trying to come up with. For it? Pardon? What about the city paying for it? How? I, I don't know. I, I'm not on the council. I, I would imagine you have a 20 year, a 40 year plan, and these are the things that are going to come up. I mean, I would think that's just how that goes. where. We have the budget for this. We got to get a bond from the state. We are, and that's why that's why we have the last option that okay. would be maybe ten or twelve years out. Okay. But, I mean, but, that's but just. I will say, you know, it's not common in any city anywhere in, that I'm aware North of in Dakota, that, for for the city to pay for all the costs of anything. I guess it, in some cities, the cities pay a portion to offset the cost, and it depends on what they're doing, but. I'm not. I'm not familiar with any city saying, "Well, we're just going to cover all the costs and not assess any residents." And I, I totally appreciate that. But what cities are you familiar with on how that goes? Yeah, we don't have two point five million dollars. We don't have two million. Where's the money coming from? Unless we raise taxes, which we don't want to do. 
Well, you are, though, but you're just selecting the people you're raising taxes on. If we came to you and said, hey, guess what? We're going to put storm and sewer in yours and say, hey, here's a $50,000 bill for you because you have a bigger lot than everybody else in your neighborhood. You'd be mad. Peter, we have a lot of things going on in the city. Okay. Right? We have a lot of infrastructure needs. So it's not just your development, but every area of the city has a unique problem that needs to be that needs to be taken care of. Right, but you're pricing everybody out. And rumor had it, I just throwing it out there to make sure it's not true, that the guy that didn't crown our road is building another <laughs> development in this town. And I, I can't believe that would even happen after what's going on here. So I'm not sure who you're talking about. That's yeah, right. that Whatever precedes that precedes me. So Anyways, I I think I, Jody wants to say something. Hello, uh, Jody Bertrand, 276 Chestnut. Uh, got fairly significant background, the city of Moorhead and the city of Fargo. I have done assessments myself. I'm the stor storm sewer engineer, so I have some questions for him once we finish here what the uh, upgrades are going to be. But uh, uh, most of the communities, I think, that are in the area, they do uh, have major upgrades. Like you said, infrastructure. You guys are working with Fargo to do the sanitation side of things, the water side of things. I think that's just, we're coming down to that point where we don't want to raise taxes. I think we're at that point if we're going to go anywhere. Uh, typically what the, the city of Fargo does, they have an infrastructure policy, so it just isn't up to just three people on a board. They'll actually look at the uh, type of improvement, whether it's storm sewer, it's usually based on a square footage. So if you've got twice as big a lot as your neighbor, you pay slightly more. Then typically what it's based on for any road improvements that I've been aware of on both sides of the river, it's uh, front footage. So if you've got 85 foot of front, front foot, the next guy has 100, you pay that 15% higher. Uh, realize the uh, city commission hasn't been real proactive and passed, you know, city on the grow, I guess. I mean, you guys have really taken the uh, path forward to get done with the, uh, the water and sewer so we can actually develop and do things out here. Uh, we're going to hit that 5,000 person threshold out here very soon, and the roads are going to be ours. The county is going to step away. We'll have additional funding that's going to be required. Uh, just to let everybody know, I'm more than willing to be a resource on any of those topics, but uh, the assessments usually are partially funded through the uh, cities and most communities. It should be pointed out that the assessment has not been set for this. It's, it hasn't been determined how the yeah, benefit is going to be assessed to each lot. So yes, that is probably the way it's going to be done, is that front footage, not just a divided by however many foot. This is just a, a rough yeah, estimate. Yeah, I'm just right. saying it's not, it hasn't been decided yet. Right. Okay. As far as so we'll get the special some assessment options, commission. You know, just some decides. numbers to try and get an idea of what yeah, we're doing. I understand that. Just, and I looked at the numbers, looked at some of the things that are in the, the bids and stuff like that too. I think that a, a few of the items probably are overkill from what I've seen. Some of the... My experience, mud jacking doesn't work. I've used it in both communities. It, after about three years, it settles. So usually for the 25 bucks they have estimated, you spend 50, you can get the curb replaced and actually get uh, the rebar in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the drain tile behind the curb, I don't believe it's going to be very effective. You're going to rip up every yard. You're still going to tie into every single inlet, wherever you're coming from, east and west, to make that work for the, I guess, the sump pumps. Uh, typically, if you can keep the water inside of the uh, curb and gutter, you know, get your crown on the road, there isn't going to be the uh, the raveling and the problems with the asphalt pavement. So, I think if we get the uh, small segments where you can see uh, people's services, usually where they go into their house, if you go ahead and uh, get those small segments replaced, I think the get the crown back on the road. I think everything will be uh, much better on the water side. Like I said, I have some questions about the storms or improvements with the lift station and stuff. But so, is there is there presently like a flap gate and everything that keeps the water from coming back into the system? Then there's a gate valve there that's shut. Because the river is hardly ever low enough, just a free flow. Okay, I mean, so it's twice a year, maybe the river is low enough, but so, other than that, that's shut. It just pumps out. So, so 100 percent pump all the time. Okay, I guess I would almost rather see the uh, lift station or the sanitary lift station looked at more than anything. The storm. Once we get the road and stuff, uh, I know when we did the original development, the homeowners all involved here. The assessments we paid for the lift station on the corner of uh, Ironwood there, and then as a subsequent thing, they went and they did the development on the other side of. the 2017, mm -hmm. and to my knowledge, I don't know if they paid any fees to hook up or paid for anything, so they pretty much got their lift station for free, as far as I'm aware of, unless Vance or somebody knows. There was no hookup fees. Okay, so we've got all those people over there that haven't paid anything. Maybe there should be a 
hook up fee for those to make some upgrades to our sanitary system if they had to put another force main in. So. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other? Oh, good caddy. My name is Tom Hagnes, and uh, I'm Tammy's father, and she invited me here, so I hope you don't mind. And I was on the other side of the fence for 24 years on the city council in Grand Fork, 35 years on the city uh, planning and zoning, and uh, I was on the public service committee that dealt with projects just like you're dealing with here tonight, and people that came that uh, after the fact almost because they didn't come out and have a public hearing or uh, informational meeting in February when they proposed the project or they might have been there then before they had to protest it. And they're not protesting the project from what I understand because uh, I talked to some of the people myself by going around with a petition. And one <coughs> of the questions they did ask is, Sidewalks proposed uh, on I any of these options? Sidewalks, no. Okay, that clears that up because the rumor was, and I might have helped uh, spread the rumor after I heard it also, was that uh, <laughs> sidewalks were uh, proposed in the most expensive options. We'll squash that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And, uh, and the project as proposed in the first option probably is not economically feasible. Be, probably because they're still paying for assessments uh, in the first, uh, when they first did the project, and the 20 years isn't up yet. And uh, the people that didn't pay them uh, with their lot uh, fees, that they've got their special assessments. Mm -hmm. And some of the rumors have it that, and I'm going to mention the engineer's name if you don't all know that, but I think some of you do, or most of you do, that more engineering wasn't real responsible uh, for the project that they did originally. Yeah, and one of the more engineering was not involved. It wasn't more. It was no. Houston engineering. Now the rumor Houston then Houston that wasn't true. And uh, uh, whoever that engineer was, the streets could have been sealed like they're supposed to be. I know every seven years <coughs> in our city, when you have that uh, asphalt street, you have to seal them so you prevent what's happening out there right now on Chestnut. And uh, that's an additional expense, but it's got to be done or you're gonna continue to have problems with those uh, types of streets. And uh, the people I've talked to uh, out there, and my daughter and uh, uh, son-in-law are asking me to speak for them, is that you need to have public hearings or uh, committee means of some sort ahead of time, maybe even at the school or here in your health chambers, but there's great council chambers, you fill it up pretty good when you have meetings like this, I see. And uh, uh, so that you have that information that you've got, Brian, uh, distributed plenty of time ahead of time, not 30 days, because it'll be done this fall if the 30 days comes up and you didn't have the protest uh, of the project as it is presented now. It's not that they don't think the project should be done of, of some condition to improve the streets and the sanitary or the store drain. I don't even know if the sanitary sewers are involved in this here. But uh, if the uh, assessments are fair to everybody, uh, the benefiting property owners, whether it's on Ironwood or where they're at, will be assessed for it. If the Special Assessment Commission looks at who benefits. And there should be a hookup fee on it. And then, uh, uh, do you get highway users tax money in Horace? Yes. You do. And what do you do with that money? That's gas tax money, meant for roads. Yeah, well... What do we do with it? Yes. Well, we try not to spend it, first of all. Well, yeah. you need to spend it for it streets and highways. It doesn't yeah. have to be paid for 100%, I don't have but to, some participate. Yeah, I think there's about 900,000. I don't have the financials in front of me, but, but 
we do have a substantial amount in the highway fund. Good, that would take care of option two. <laughs> keep, keep in mind, this is not the only project in the city. This isn't the only project. This is no, I, 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 so I, there's I there's other projects out. that you know Chip Seal and so forth that's underway. So this is the challenge of sure. taking that money and saying how do you divide that money up between the different residents and on all the other projects. So some of them we don't even bring to this because they're just maintenance. To your point, right? Sealing sure. some of the roads. They don't because the city's paying for it. It just happens, right? Sure. Because we don't need you know public input to, to, to complete those projects. So th those situations you know are outside of this kind of venue. So that's why this process was triggered because it would impact residents. Sure. So that's where the process came into play. So it, you know obviously if there's other options that we should be pursuing, absolutely. Now what that happens is if this protest fails and we not, don't do this project, we then go back to the drawing board. So we either say no, nope, we're not doing the project like ever, or now we have to come back and how much more time do we have to redesign, right? Because every time we do a design iteration, it costs the city money, sure. right? So how many times do we do that redesign element to come up with something that's now acceptable? I, I get that everyone doesn't want to pay anything for it, right? I, as, right. As a homeowner, I don't want to pay for anything. Same but thing. guess what? That's the reality of it. So if you go through and just seal a street, do you assess everybody there for that amount? Is that how that goes? I mean, I just looked at our tax bill last night and there's uh, $158 a year for another uh, road improvement for there's assessment on our tax bill. Is that what that is? Is that what you guys came through and did some curve and got in there? Typically what's done in the past, Damon and Jim, is if there's a seal coat a year later, that's built into the original project. Mm -hmm. And those funds are set aside for what you're asking about. Yeah. Does so that answer so your you question? No, not really. So what's the um, assessment on our tax bill now? Just, I'm just trying to, you know, the reason I have a project, is it for I, it? was a number I didn't know. It's, it's, I don't, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a road and road that'll tell road us road. What, what type of project it was, and then you can look back and see. Why you're being one. Yes, then. But it's one click and it didn't say what it was. Yeah, yeah I don't have that from I'm just see it very it varies because some homeowners they paid off all their specials yeah, yeah. right when they bought it. So then you know, like diversion maintenance. Diversion maintenance can come on there. There's all sorts of different assessments that get dropped on there. So it could be anything from the county, from the city. I was more asking the question of like all these projects you talk about, we have all these projects we want to work on on the road. If it's over X amount of dollars to assess that area, you're like, eh, it's too much trouble, let's just do it and take the money for that. Because that's really where, you know, when we talk about percentage of the tax dollars that are going to go towards this, you know, just one of the well, percentage plan. of the tax dollar. Yeah, right? I mean, that's that's what, what you guys know what you're saying. It would depend on if your property is in the, the original improvement district that created that, that project, and then you're assessed, um, whatever the assessment commission comes up with for that project. So it doesn't come. If you're not, if your property okay. isn't benefited by it, two different things. I totally get well, what you're saying. What I'm saying is that if the city's willing to put any tax dollars towards this, how do they determine what percentage? If you're paving somebody's road, are they get assessed for that total yes. value? Like we are and every single time you pave a road. Typically, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So everybody in this whole town has we an assessment. All, everyone so whoever okay. benefits from the project will pay. So if there's a project almost identical to this, not, not identical, but it's similar on Northwood and Southwood. So all the people, all the residents that live on Northwood and Southwood are gonna go through the same, you know, protest period, the announcement period, separate, every, everything, right? Right. So they can decide if they want to, so you the, know. So, so the million bucks sitting in the highway fund, that's just for repairs. potholes? Pretty much repairs. It's, the funds are there that I can spend, I need board approval before mm -hmm. I transfer funds, of course. Sure. Uh, but it's it's a growing fund. Um, do I use it every month? Yes, to a certain extent. Uh, we do a lot of street work, we do a lot of patching and stuff, and all those money has come out of that fund. But there hasn't been a large amount of money dispersed from that fund in several years. Okay. That's why it, has the amount of money it does. So How much comes in a year? Vance, I think you could say that goes for lift station repairs, all of those. Uh, lift station typically comes out of water and sewer funds, so that's a little bit different, Sharon. Yeah. How much comes in a year? 
from that point. Oh gosh, it uh, varies. Yeah, it varies. You know, it, you know, right now what we're facing with is North Dakota legislature is cutting us back sure. so bad. Uh, preparing budget, for example, is nothing but a moving target. Right. No. I have no idea. I can do a five-year history. So what uh, would that be? A five-year history. Per year. I, I, have to I, I didn't have to learn. I didn't but right. the, thing sure that, the thing that you have to remember is our funds are being cut drastically by it, it's not this board's fault, it's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's that's your legislators what their opinion is on that. TJ? So last October a few of us Kathy and I on board here hopped on a committee the last couple years to help when all these new houses are being built, so we start getting taxes on it. Because over the years, all the houses up here, when you know someone buys their materials on the arms or whatever, it's going to the city part of the start. So we got that done, and we boarded that in in October. Where is that money? I'm sure it's just starting to roll in. Where is that money going? Which fund is that? They ask, is that does it go into that fund you're talking about? The two percent. Yeah, it's it's just starting. It's okay. just starting. So we haven't gotten any money off that. Yes. You guys know it's last month, last like, month, I think the first month we got five dollars. So, there you go. I have, I have, I have, I have twenty three thousand dollars in roughly in the sales tax fund tonight. Now, uh, on or about the fifteenth of each month, I get an initiation deposit from the state for June sales tax revenue. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't, so I don't have a number for you. But there's twenty three grand in there. But so the point is, is that that is supposed to be for infrastructure. And now it's a decision of where that, how we use that, in, what is deemed infrastructure? Is that water, is it storm sewer, is it sanitary? That, that element of how, that, how those funds are gonna be used, we don't even know how much can we budget for. We don't know if it's gonna be $1,000 a month or $10,000 a month or how more, we don't know. So it's really hard for us to say, okay, we're gonna allocate amount of money for a specific project. Can we, should we, why, why would this project merit getting funding from that fund versus the neighbors down the street. What, okay, what if they want some funds and all of a sudden those funds dry up? We don't know. That's There's too many unknowns with this sales tax other than it's intended to be used for infrastructure. So right now, we need to get some time behind this so we know how much we can budget for and then say, okay, if there's a, uh, a reconstruction project or a, you know one another one that's on the list is a water meter. Right? We want to get all the homes in the city uh, to have remote read water meters. So we, nobody has to go write their stupid meter reading on the bill and send it in. We could do that all electronically. Right? We can simplify that process. Maybe that's where we use those funds to pay that project and we don't have to charge any residents for that. That's an option, right? So it, there's a decision process on how we allocate those funds. Have we gone through that process? No. But, very good question. <clears throat> Did I answer it fairly well? Okay. Uh, and we figured it was going to take a while to start coming in some more building comes and go faster. It could accelerate. I just want to make sure that with that, was it was earmarked, when we went through it, was earmarked for you guys to use some of that for things like this. this we saw that coming out of the pipe. Right. That, that's been the topic of how do we... If, if it's a limited benefit project, meaning it, it affects one project or you know, one development versus the whole city, that's harder to justify allocating funds because why should I give you the money and then not give it to the next neighbors down the road? That, that's a re that's gonna be, would be a really hard conversation, <laughs> right? So, Kathy, you had a question. If you come with, with it as like not a general thing, it, it's, you're pitting neighborhood against neighborhood. Like, you know, like some of you even said in that meeting, why are we going to put a toll booth up there at the corner and everybody that comes in that doesn't have a pass has to pay? I mean, that's really where you're going with the whole, if, it, if we're really truly looking at ourselves as a community, every there's no too small a factor in that. And if we say, if it's not like, hey, let's do water meters and yeah. we're going to lose money on that because nobody uses all the money we get charged for. I, I, just, I, I just want you guys to keep that in mind that, you gotta remember, we're all one community. Yeah. It's not for subdivision, subdivision, subdivision. Right. Right. Yeah. And we've had the discussion of the city committing a percentage of dollars to the project. What that percentage is, 
We right. haven't had that conversation yet. We don't know what the right. number is. We don't know how much money is in the Home Rule Charter Fund. We, we just, we don't know because, and like we said, these numbers are so rough that if we were going to go forward with the project, we'd get better numbers. We'd get actual numbers from, the, from a project that, so we'd have something more concrete. The point of this was to have this discussion. And I'm really glad that you all are here mm -hmm. to tell us what yeah. you think and what you think we should do. Yeah. Sure. Kathy, you've been waiting. Well, Sorry. I just have one question. So if we, um, you know, the spring is when it was really bad and that water stayed for, you know, until this was the only option unless we do the first option to pump that out. Well, I think that's what the second option is. Too, storm storm. It goes the second yeah, option. Storm storm. Some of the pipes have heaved, so the water sits there because it's got nowhere to go, and it freezes because it just stands there. So then we got to come pump it out, and then try to steam it out where we can see where it's going. Until that's done, if those pipes, we just hammered a section on the north end of town, and it's heaved in the one yard, and it'll always have water standing in it until it goes over that point because it got pushed up from the frost because it's so low. If we don't fix it, there'll always be water standing there to a point, and then it'll always back it up until we have enough water to flow through. And in the winter, when the sun pumps and other stuff go into the street, it just sits there, fills it up more, and then it freezes the solids, and then we have to come pump it out or steam it, vice versa, just to get the water to go somewhere. So, so what's the warranty going to be on a new construction project? Is it going to be one year again? Because we paid for the first one, and then who's to say that's 10 years down the road? Where is it the same, same, it the same engineering firm that's doing this? No, no. no. I, I still don't understand how it was so poorly designed. Well, the water said, table has always been in there. I live in Steel Free Chestnut Drive. <coughs> my cell phone hasn't run yet this year. Right. But when I built my house, I knew that the lots were low because the people around here are going to be built in 2002. And we pushed off our lot and put the foundation there. And I have a four foot basement. So my cell phone only runs if we get like a really bad or a really fast fall, but I haven't had it running this year at all. But that water main has been there, and isn't that why some of that drainage is not dug deep enough to make up water and it couldn't go as low as they were supposed to? It, it really seems like it was poorly engineered in the first place, and it was then allowed to go through by the city, we'll build it anyway, and then we'll fix it later. So that's my point, 10 years would have been the same again. Maybe I have to work on another... We just can't keep going on every That's day. why I'd like yeah. it to slow down and have people's input so that we don't end up in the same boat again, that we do it right this time. And it kind of probably alarmed a lot of people when it says that this would be done by fall of this year. Mm -hmm. not better. Mm -hmm. yeah. That should not have been. Fair enough. That's kind of fast. And I agree with a lot of people. This meeting should have happened before the thing went into the paper because it feels kind of like it was backdoor and like, oh, nobody sees it. Well, we got it through here. And I know that probably wasn't the intention, but that's how it kind of appears. It's not that hard to notify 46 homes mm -hmm. that this is what's going on with the letter. We get the worst happenings every month. We get a water bill every month. Easily could have got a letter in one of those times before the paper site. This is what's going on. I just like um, I, I do the inspections for all your new basements around the city, and I have for many years. And I can tell you. I can go to his house that says his water, uh, he don't pump water, and I can go two houses down, and their pump never shuts off. Yeah. And around this community, I don't care if you're right in town, or if you're a mile north of town, I tell you what, between two lots, it's just remarkable that one is dug the same depth, the same everything, and it's dry as a bone. And they can dig the next one the same day, and that water is pouring in the camp people dry enough to hardly pour concrete in. So back to my question, what's the warranty on, on this project? That'll come. Well, I, I, can, I couldn't tell you right now, Brian, because that's going to be a conversation we have to have with the engineers and the attorneys. Be <laughs> We're not there yet. So quick, we got one minute left, right? Pardon? We like, yeah, we, we got to wrap up. Yeah. So what is the, I go back to my question, What what's the next steps? What, what does this process look like? I mean, if we had 32 people sign the petition, right, um, saying, does that mean the project's killed? If all of these signatures are for residents within that, then um, there will be a protest hearing. I'll tell you right now, this is just a public hearing. The city council is going above and beyond what's actually required. 
So there, there's a protest hearing after your 30 day period. But right now, if all these are good, then the development pro, uh, protest the um, improvement project and it won't go through. Okay, because you know, it goes back to which yeah. option are we protesting and, and things like that, right? I mean, right, what's, that, it's no, hard no, to protest no, when you don't know it, what you're doing yet. Mike, at yeah. this point, well, it, the whole project is, is dead. Correct. So we have to start over. At this point, the whole option A or B doesn't matter. The whole thing is dead. So we have to start over. Could we start like a committee of, of the people in the community that is affected we, by it? We absolutely can do that. Yeah. And then with that, you can do a petition for improvements, and then you can say, okay, here's the project we want, and then go through that process. No reason that the city council did this because they saw that the road needed to be improved. So sure. oh, yeah. well, we, we get that. We really appreciate that. Okay, is there, we got to wrap it up here. Go ahead. Can I just ask one final question? Um, so. I mean, from the first from the first time yeah, it was done. Like 15 years, 17 years. We we would have to look back in the project file. It, it's a big rumor. I don't know. It, uh, there again, we don't know if that was actually done. If it, if it was done, if it wasn't done, we if there is an evidence in the project file, then there's nothing more we can do. So we, we can try and look back. All I can tell you is we'll try and look back and see if we can find that. I just, off the top, we don't know. But keep in mind, the project file is like inch Four, thick. 14 inches. 14 inches thick is a project file. So but we can look. We'll try and see what we can do. Somebody else in the back had a question, DJ? Yeah, just one last thing. Um, I appreciate you guys' time because some of this and 241 in the back. I mean, there's major issues. Last year, my kids couldn't come home from school, and my wife couldn't get out to work one morning because both sides were Something needs to be done. No one wants to pay any taxes. No one wants to pay for it. Yep. Obviously. So I appreciate you guys at least addressing that there is major issues there. And for all of us that you know are dealing with this every year, with trying to get our kids when our kids can't walk home from school, um, I appreciate that. And I just I, I think it's great that you guys want to get more people involved and get us start over. At least you know there's an issue and we got to address it. So right. maybe so, that's the next step. To Mike's point, is there somebody that's willing to be, I mean, I can help facilitate some for, go forward meetings since this is my area of ownership, right? So if what, who would, I mean, just send out some information, get an email list or something. Could somebody put together an email list for the residents so that I can start communicating? And maybe that might be the easiest way to arrange another meeting, a follow on meeting to do some, get some other engineering options. Because it might be now, it's kind of probably back to you guys. What do you want to have done? Are we including you? You kind of, you kind of get an idea of what we're talking, what we've been talking about tonight. You know, the whole reconstruction is going to cost him all the way down to doing nothing. So maybe we need to allocate this. What, what should we take care of first? Is it just a storm sewer? Would that help? You know. Can't do anything to the people behind us. All their water went into the. I don't know. We got to look. That's a different question. though. We're we'll looking into that. Which is the one way to do that? Apple Orchard. Apple Orchard chant because it's not in the city limits. Yeah, 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 it's not in the city limits